It's time for ROTD Weekend. It was my birthday this week, and I'm having a party this weekend. It's like 30 or 40 people, but not for dinner, just for like drinks and hanging out in the evening. And my goal is to make it as easy on me as possible, both before and during the party, so that I can relax and enjoy myself. And so I thought I'd tell you what I have planned. I kind of do the same thing all the time for these get-togethers, and so I have it down pat, and I'm going to let you know what I'm doing. So to start with, for drinks, I always buy a case or two of flavored seltzer water, the unsweetened, you know, like LaCroix or Bubbly Brand, whatever those are, and and a case of one kind of canned soda, and those go into a cooler with ice. I typically say BYOB, but in case somebody forgot or didn't realize it or whatever, there is something non-alcoholic for them. And then I usually do a wine punch. Similarly, in case somebody wants to have something but didn't bring it or wants to try something new, it's just available for everyone. And I like doing a wine punch because it's basically like watered down wine on some level. And so it just has a nice low alcohol content. People can sip on it and it's not going to be like too intense, you know, to make the wine punch punch, I get a three liter box of wine or three liters equivalent of wine and I pour that into a big container and then I add three cups of that flavored unsweetened seltzer water. So you're getting some nice background flavor. I'm going with mango for this one just because I really like the mango seltzer water. And then I get a just bland soda, something like 7-Up Sprite, that kind of thing. And I just add it to taste. So I'm just stirring and adding until it's just that little bit sweet, kind of enhances the mango flavor. Little, little bit sweet, but not too sweet. So I should have said I chill the wine and the seltzer water and the soda ahead of time. So it's all cold. And then just before the party starts is when I mix that all together so that it still has the fizz. And then I'll add in some ice and usually some frozen fruit as well. I love frozen blueberries. They're just sort of small and they melt quickly and they're nice in the glasses. So that is my simple tasty wine punch. And you can, of course, customize that to whatever flavor profile you want. And then for the food, So it's not dinner, but I do like to have some food on hand if people are drinking or just there for a few hours, they're going to want something, right? Sometimes I will actually make something. I'm not doing that this time, but I'll tell you, one of my favorite go-tos is to make a slow cooker full of chili and then another one with queso in it. And then either I will put out or I will ask people to bring different toppings and tortilla chips will be there. And you're basically making like a nacho bar or even even taco salad bar if you have lots of lettuce. So you just put out the lettuce, the taco chips, and then chopped tomatoes, green onions, cilantro, cheddar cheese. You could do some crumbled queso, sour cream, guacamole, salsa, refried beans, you know, all the stuff. You put all of that out there. You put out some plates or like deep plates, like the bowls, the paper ones, or if you're using your own dishes. And then people can go and they get some tortilla chips and or lettuce, and then they can spoon the chili on there, drizzle some cheese sauce, add all their toppings, and they just get this really delicious snacky kind of meal. And it's really not much work. I'm making some chili and some queso or you can do store-bought queso. And then, like I said, you can ask people to bring their favorite toppings. So then you don't actually do anything else. So that is one of my favorites. And it's also really accommodating for different like allergies or nutritional needs, right? Because if somebody's vegetarian, they can have the queso and the refried beans. If they're vegan, then not the queso or the chili if the chili has meat in it. But you can put out some chickpeas, the refried beans, like I said, and then there's lettuce, tomatoes, greens, all those things that people can make. It's gluten-free because the tortilla chips aren't gluten, but, you know, make sure that the chili and or the queso don't have any gluten in them. But you see what I mean? There's just lots of different options because everybody's kind of making their own and that works really well for a group. I'm not doing that this time because I've decided that I don't want to cook anything. Instead, I'm doing my second favorite thing to do for a party and that is charcuterie boards. And what I do is I go to Aldi because they have tons of fancy looking 
amazing, nice tasting lunch beans, and there's cheeses, blocks of cheeses, and pretty much everything I need. I arrange one tray with meat and another tray with cheese in case people are vegetarian and don't want to have the cheese touching the meat. And then I'll usually do a veggie tray and maybe a fruit tray as well. What I'm doing this time to make it a little bit birthday themed is I'm using colorful cupcake liners to hold some of the ingredients. So I'm getting some dried fruit, some nuts, uh, those sorts of things will be in those. And then I have some foil cupcake liners that I'm going to pop inside of the colorful ones to do sort of the more like wet things. We could do olives in those, a spread or a dip. And so that is going to look really cute, I think. And then I guess I'll tell you what I usually put out with these trays is a custom little dip or spread that I make. People always love these and they're really, really just a little cheat, honestly. So I get two kinds of jam, let's say strawberry and apricot. Okay. And then I mix one of them with some kind of grainy mustard. So then we have, let's say strawberry mustard, right? It has those grains in it. Looks really nice. I do always taste it. Add a pinch of salt sometimes. Sometimes it needs a little lemon or lime juice as well, but that's pretty much it for that one. And then the other one, I take the other jam and I mix it with sriracha and then it's nice and spicy. So then you have an apricot sriracha. Same thing. Give that a stir and then taste it and see if it needs a little salt, a little lime. But those are pretty and taste really interesting. And, you know, people are just surprised and delighted to have something new or different So yeah, that is what I'm doing for my birthday party. I do not have a link for the wine punch because for some reason I've never done that recipe on the website, but I do have tons of links to how to build nice charcuterie boards. One of them even has like maps to show you how to arrange things. So I'll put those links in the show notes. If you've never really been happy with your charcuterie boards or never really tried to make a really nice one, you really should because once I learned how to do it, people are just stunned by them. I'm stunned by them. I take pictures of them. I will try to remember to take pictures of these cupcake holder ones that I'm doing and post them for you. But yeah, once you know how to do it and how to like really pile up the plate and give it the variety that it needs and arrange things, it is really lovely. Speaking of lovely, my guest for today is Christine McMichael of Jar of Lemons. And I'm pretty sure that she has great ideas for birthday parties because she has three little ones. Today, Today, though, we are talking about some meal planning and cooking for picky eaters and how she juggles that food blog, cooking for everybody, making it healthy. And she has a delicious surprise recipe for us. Let's listen to my conversation with Christine McMichael from jaroflemons.com. Christine McMichael, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. I'm excited to be here too. You're like taking me back to a time that is almost a distant memory, but very fond. So you (laughs) have little ones. How old are your kids? They are one, three, and okay, hold on. They just had birthdays. So one, (laughs) four, and six. You know, you're a mom of multiples when you're like, oh, wait, that's not their ages. Yeah, no, for sure. Yeah, yeah. So they're still young. And you are a food blogger like I am. And so you are feeding them and writing about these recipes. And your goal is to get healthy meals on the table quickly for your family on busy weeknights. Can you tell me one of your strategies for these quick meals? Yeah. So I am all about a one pan or one dish, one casserole dish recipe because I think one of the funniest things about being a recipe developer is I hate doing dishes. Like I hate it more than cooking, more than, I mean, like more than like a long recipe, I will do anything to not have dishes. (laughs) So that's a big part of it for me is like, there's something about like a one dish, one pan meal that feels, I don't know, like really complete and easy. But then I also do a lot of prep in advance to be able to get a meal done quickly. So on the weekends, I do a lot of like semi prep, I don't do like full meal preps where I'm like making a whole recipe and then taking the portions, I will just cook a bunch of rice or quinoa and have it ready to go for the week. 
or I'll make chicken. I'm also in a phase where my toddler isn't going to eat like something with a bunch of sauce on it. Like she just eat like steamed or like cooked lightly cooked chicken with maybe a little bit of seasoning Mm -hmm. so i'll just make a big batch of that and then that chicken is like a blank slate to use in different recipes that's kind of always been the way i approached it with kids well and that's a good strategy for if you have picky eaters too because you can make that bland batch of chicken and then when you're making your pasta or whatever you're doing that night for the rest of you pull hers out and leave it to the right. side, right? And it doesn't have yes, to get exactly. everything that everybody else's is getting. And I remember when mine were that little, like they didn't care if they were eating what we were eating. They were most delighted if it was their like chicken and rice, very similar, and like <laughs> carrots. Like they just, oh, yay, yes. this is what I want. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like a piece of bread with peanut butter on it. And I they're know. like, oh, this is a great dinner. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, we used to do, um, well, we still do. I, we did it last night. One of my go-tos for our family, and especially, you know, so last night we had neighbors over, and one of them is vegetarian. And so um, we do like burrito bowls. So I did like a flank steak, sliced it thin, we had rice, and then all the toppings, and did beans and stuff so that vegetarian can have the same thing as everybody else and the rest of us have the flight steak. But then also the kids can take which vegetables they want. But back like when they were little like yours, they didn't pile everything up. They So they would call this dinner and we still sometimes say this, they would call this dinner piles of stuff because it was their <laughs> the, pile of tomatoes, pile, <laughs> pile of rice, <laughs> pile of, and so they had great. like three or four little piles of just what they wanted and not this mound of like <laughs> everything mixed together. They don't want all those. There's something about that. Yeah. Yeah. I just want to identify this broccoli in my <laughs> mouth and do not let it have any other flavors on it. That's so funny. So when you're focusing on the one pan meals, do you I I have preferences here. Do you have a preference between like one pan in the oven, one pot, like stew pot on the stove or like skillet dinners? Do you have favorites among those? It depends on the time of year. Mm -hmm. Like if it's fall or winter, for sure. I love like a good stew or soup in my Dutch oven. But in the summer, I love to make like a cast. I love my cast iron skillet. Mm -hmm. I have a really big one. I like to start things on the stovetop and then move them to the oven. That is my favorite method. And then just like throw a sauce over it, serve it over rice. That's Mm -hmm. always been like my favorite thing. Yeah, no, I like that too. I love, I don't know, these days I feel like I've been at the stove more than normal and I'm not sure why, but when you can put everything in the oven and walk away, even if it's going to take, yes. So I mean, you're, you're trying for 30 minutes, but like, Busy weeknight, if I can get like a big pan of, you know, chicken and potatoes, veggies, whatever, and throw it in the oven and just walk away, even if it's going to take a while, I am just hands off that whole time and I can go do something else. So it's just as quick. Yeah. And mentally, it feels good of like, okay, the prep time is done. Now I can, it's going to be ready in 30 minutes or whatever. Mm -hmm. So do you in your in your weekend meal prep that you're doing rice, quinoa, chicken, do you prep any veggies too? Or do you do that more on the day? I do that more as I go, just depending on what I'm making that week. And also I'm like crazy about not wasting food. (laughs) So if it depends what I have left over, especially Mm -hmm. since I test a lot of recipes, I make a lot, I cook a lot. And so I always have like random ingredients left over. My husband makes fun of me because I will like turn anything into a chili. (laughs) <laughs> I'm like, it's leftover fridge day. We're making chili. And he's like, that doesn't go in a chili. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm does like, it oh, taste wrong. good? Does it taste good? <laughs> it t- I think it does. Yes, he does too. But he's always like, that's an interesting combination. <laughs> that was creative for sure. <laughs> oh, <laughs> but that's, that's just funny. like our leftover. Like, I just need to like clean out the fridge. I do, if I have like leftover carrots, I'll oftentimes just steam a bunch for my kids because we are still in, my baby's learning how to eat foods. And so Mm -hmm. she will do a lot of like steamed carrots and sweet potatoes and things like that. And then I'll roast them for the kids as well, or toss them in like some kind of sauce with meat. And then they love that too. Nice. I love that. Well, now, Christine, you have brought a surprise recipe for me today. Is it a 30 minute meal? It's not a 30-minute oh. meal, but it is a 45-minute meal. Wonderful. And <laughs> 
Most of my recipes are 30 and that is what I typically go for. But every once in a while, there's one like you just have to make because it's so easy and like the flavors are just next level. Um, So that's this one that I'm bringing today. Well, and I think sometimes like I can make things in 30 minutes, but that can be stressful sometimes, right? Like that's a full on 30 minutes of work. Whereas sometimes when, like we were just talking about, it might be 45 minutes, but some of it is hands off or some of it, or you're more like, you know, stirring risotto on the stove and you're like more relaxed about it. You know, there's different. um, Okay. So 45 minute meal. What are you telling me about today? Okay, so these are my honey sesame chicken meal prep bowls. Mm. And I call them meal prep, but they don't have to be like I actually make these all the time just for dinner. Or you can like partially prep things and then finish it during the week. But they it's crispy, lightly fried chicken Mm. in this cornstarch seasoning coating uh, texture. And then there's a honey sesame sauce that goes over the whole thing over rice and sauteed veggies. And it's so simple, but the flavors are so good. And and my kids like it. And they are picky about things like this. So (laughs) it's one of my favorites. It's that sweet sauce, right? Like I find that that's like one of the gateways when they're little, like, oh, you don't like sauce in your food? What about this sauce? (laughs) (laughs) This one has sugar in it. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I like that you can make it spicy, but it doesn't have to be. You can kind of Mm -hmm. adjust it to taste, which Mm -hmm. is awesome for parents who want something a little more flavorful. Yeah, for sure. Okay, so where do you start when you're making this one? Okay, so I start with the chicken. I cube the chicken breast into bite-sized pieces. And then I mix together really easily this cornstarch seasoning mixture, which I will add, you can use tapioca starch. Mm -hmm. The best thing about this is you can adjust the coating to taste. I actually don't typically fry or coat my meats in breading, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but this one is worth it. (laughs) And you can half it. You don't have to do the full amount. Or you can even just sprinkle some on there. Um, Once it's coated, you lightly fry it in avocado oil on the stovetop. And then while that's happening, you whisk the sauce together. So the sauce is made out of, um, we have honey, tomato paste, tamari or soy sauce. Or I use coconut aminos a lot. Sesame oil, ginger, salt, and then sesame seeds. So it's very, very simple. So the coconut aminos are instead of the soy sauce? Correct. Yeah. Why why would you choose them over the soy sauce? They have less sodium. They're a healthier alternative. Mm -hmm. And I will add though, if you use coconut aminos, the sauce will be less salty. It'll be a little bit sweeter, slightly less salty, but Mm -hmm. it's just a better for you alternative. Mm -hmm. So if you want that super salty taste, you might just stick with soy sauce. Mm -hmm. Tamari is a gluten-free alternative. Um, So there's a lot of options there. Mm -hmm. And then once you whisk that sauce together, you actually take the chicken out of the pan and put it in the sauce to let it soak up that sauce Uh into the breading. And then the veggies, which are... Wait, so the chicken comes out of the pan and goes into the sauce and then that cornstarch coating kind of soaks it up. Does it end up kind of like glazed? Yeah, it, it turns into like this glaze over the crispy breading. Nice. And then I, using that same pan, yeah. I will not use another pan, <laughs> I add some more oil and then I just saute, like lightly saute the snow peas, uh, Brussels sprouts, carrots, and then add a little bit of seasoning on there as well. And it is so easy. Then I put the veggies over cooked rice. So mm-hmm. I like to use, this is kind of my weeknight hack. If I'm being honest, I also like to use these packets. They are, I think they're called Seeds of Change or something like that, Mm -hmm. the brand. And it's organic rice, jasmine rice, and you just put them in the microwave and it it makes perfectly fluffy rice for bowls, which I love. Or I cook it in advance and I have it ready Mm -hmm. to go. Just heat it up and then put the veggies over it, put the chicken over it, and then drizzle the sauce. And, there's, and it is so, so there's, easy. So there's extra sauce. The, the chicken goes in the sauce. It soaks up some of it and kind of coats it. And then there's more left for drizzling there's extra. over. Oh, oh, yeah, for sure. I always like to add have a little extra sauce to drizzle. That sounds delicious. So, yeah. And there was sesame seeds in there as well or sesame oil? Both, actually. Oh. So okay. it's in the sauce. Um, you could also add it just on top of the entire bowl or you could add extra. I also like to add chopped green onions on top. Of course, mm-hmm. that tastes amazing. I love that. Um, 
Yeah, there's just so many ways you can make it your own. Cilantro would be nice on there as well. Yeah, lime juice, mm-hmm. a little mm-hmm. bit of lime. Mm, yeah, I love this. I think my kids would love this too. They actually both, I, you know, I'm not going to call them picky. They have their sets of taste <laughs> that they have developed, but they both actually really like the like teriyaki chicken at the mall. We don't go to the mall very often, but when we end up there... <laughs> They want Doesn't it. Doesn't everyone every time. though? I know it's so good. And so when I do like riffs on that for dinner, they they usually like the food that I make. But they'll say it's not as good as the mom mom, but it's really good. Like so, I think yeah, that that's so funny. This would be a fun way to like do that same idea that I know they like, but not have them like directly comparing me to the mom. Yes, this is not teriyaki. Yeah, it is, it is different but similar. Yes, I think they like that it. Is- so funny. Well, Christine, this is wonderful. I will put the link to this recipe in the show notes for everybody. And can you let everyone know where they can find you online? Yeah, absolutely. So it's jarflemons.com for all of my recipes. You can also sign up for my email list on there and get them directly to your inbox. And then on Instagram, I'm jar.of.lemons. And then everywhere else, I'm jar of lemons. Pretty easy to find. Oh, and you have a beautiful Instagram account with lots of followers Thank too, you. right? Yeah, you're doing a lot of great stuff on there. It's really nice. Thank you. It's been fun connecting with my audience on there and seeing what they love. Yeah, everyone definitely go and check Christine out there, jar.of.lemons. Thank you so much, Christine. This has been great. Thank you so much. So I have to say that I have not made Christine's exact honey sesame chicken prep bowl recipe yet, but I did make the sauce and I tossed some with leftover cooked chicken that I just heated up in the microwave. And then we had that with rice and then a whole bunch of different toppings. Everybody made their own. It was so tasty. I really suggest you go try it. I will put the link in the show notes for this podcast episode, or you can head to jaroflemons.com and search for honey sesame chicken over there. Now on to what I am cooking this week. I know that I mentioned to you already that I've been doing some testing with both apples and tomatoes in the air fryer. These are things that I always have that always seem to be not getting used up in time or I only need like half a tomato and then the other one's sitting in the counter or wrapped in plastic wrap sitting in the fridge. You know what I mean? So I really wanted to figure out how to make use of those really easily and And air frying them at a low temperature, it seems, makes the most wonderful sun-dried tomatoes. And so I've been running a bunch of tests to figure out exactly the right temperature and timing for those. And I am finishing that off this week and doing the photos and video for it. Similarly, the apples, what I wanted was a really like mess-free, you know, take an apple, cut it into wedges, put them in the air fryer just as they are, and then mix them with like spices and sugar and stuff after. And that is what I've done. It is actually really simple and delicious. My kids really like it too. And so I am doing, yeah, one last round of testing on that and the photos and video for that one. And then, you know, I mentioned uh, last week or the week before that I've been working on these glazes for baked ham, a pineapple glaze and a maple glaze. And in doing the testing for those and baking the hams, I actually learned some things about how to get a really nice, shiny, tasty glaze on ham. And so I'm going to do one more round, but this one more as like the step-by-steps behind how to glaze a ham, regardless of what glaze you're actually using. You know what I mean? So that is happening this week as well. As to what is going live on the websites this week on Cook the Story, we have a tutorial for how to brine a whole chicken. You know I'm obsessed with brining, and brining a chicken is a wonderful way to make it even more juicy, more tender, more delicious than ever. And it also seems to make the skin more crispy as well. So you have got to try that. And then on the cookful, so you remember this week I was telling you about the air fryer chicken shawarma. So this week on the site, we have shawarma chicken bowls. And the reason that we're doing chicken bowls, kind of similar to Christine's chicken bowls, is because my family eats these kinds of rice bowls a lot. And so changing up the 
protein, the flavorings on it, and then the ingredient that you serve with it is just a fun way to kind of get variety, even though we're kind of doing that same thing over and over again. And, you know, we do that because then everybody can have the ingredients that they like. Everybody's having some of the rice or farro or whatever grain we're doing. Everybody's having the chicken. And then maybe some people are putting feta cheese and some people aren't. Some are putting tzatziki and some aren't. And then the various veggies can change and people can choose what they do and don't want. So it's very easy for everybody to get a meal that they love and will actually eat. So the recipe for the chicken shawarma bowls is going live on the cookful this week as well. As to what I'm telling you about on this podcast this week... I have so many tasty things to share. There is a super cozy and special soup, a really wonderful air fryer side dish involving carrots and honey. There's a very, very quick and simple stroganoff, a nice ground beef casserole, and something fun for Friday is coming as well. I am here with you all week, every morning. If you are not already subscribed to the show, go on your phone to wherever you listen to podcasts, whatever app you use, and search for Recipe of the Day. You will find me there. Or head to cookthestory.com slash R-O-T-D. You can subscribe to the podcast at the top there. You can also listen to the podcast there. And I will tell you, if you are looking for the links for the various things that I've talked about in this show today, you can look in the show notes for this podcast episode or head to that same site, cookthestory.com slash R-O-T-D, and everything there is arranged by date. So it's helpful to know that today is September 14th of 2024, and then you will find everything that you're looking for. I want to say a big thank you to Christine McMichael from jaroflemons.com for being a great guest, and a big thank you to you for listening. Please tell your friends who love to cook about this show. Tell them to find Recipe of the Day on their favorite podcast app, and and spread the word about all this tasty food. Thank you so much. I'm Christine Pittman from cookthestory.com, thecookful.com, the all new chicken cookbook, and from this podcast recipe of the day. I hope you have a great weekend. Let's get cooking.